Hello everyone, I'm Daniele Massaro, I'm a PhD student and I'm attending a joint PhD program between the University of Bologna and UC Louvain. Thank you for this opportunity. I will present uh, uh, my recent work which I've carried out with uh, my colleagues and my supervisor and it is related to an update of the numerical tool MedDM. So first of all, MedDM is a numerical tool plugin of MedGraph which is able to compute different dark matter observables for generic dark matter models which should be provided in the UFO format. It is made of three different modules for relative density, direct detection and indirect detection, which would be the main focus of this work, as in the new update we have added the possibility to compute loop-induced annihilation. So indirect detection studies the products of annihilation of dark matter in overdense regions of the galaxy, we can have different final states, neutrinos, antimatter, for example, or gamma rays, which would be the main focus of this talk. In particular, we can have different ways to produce gamma rays from dark matter annihilation. So dark matter annihilates at a very low velocity. So basically the center of mass energy is equal to uh, double the dark matter mass. In the first case, the particles produced from annihilation can hadronize in pions, for example, which can then shower in photons, which make up a continuum spectrum. In the second case, we can directly produce the photons, so, or we can produce a photon and another particle. So this is a, a two-body process, and these photons have a fixed energy, so they make up a line spectrum, which is a very interesting astrophysical signature as it can be hardly mimicked by the astrophysical background. Moreover, given the fact that uh, uh, the dark matter is not charged electrically, this process can happen only at the loop level, and it is called loop-induced process. There are uh, several searches on uh, the line signature, on the gamma line signature. Uh, the main ones are are uh, from the Fermilat satellite and the HESS telescope. They have uh, uh, observed the galactic center and they have placed uh, upper limits on the annihilation cross-section. These experiments are studying uh, um, the flux of gamma rays. This is the main formula for the computation of the flux. We can uh, recognize immediately the presence of the annihilation cross-section. Then we have the spectrum of photons, which for a line spectrum is basically delta shaped. And here we can see that the energy, of course, of the photon is fixed by this relation, which depends on the mass of the particle uh, uh, that is produced along with the photon. Then we have the astrophysical input, which is encoded in this integral which is called J factor. So this depends on the region of observation of uh, the experiment, which may depend on the angle and also on the different uh, masks that the experiment uh, had placed on the galactic plane, for example. And of course, there is the dependence on the density profile of dark matter, which can be chosen between the different uh, models, uh, Navarro Frank White, in Astro, Isothermal, or Barkert, and so on. So, but now, let's talk about uh, uh, the new version of MedDM, which is version 3.2. So, in this version, we have added a new command, which is uh, in generate indirect spectral features, which is able to automatically generate um, the loop-induced annihilations into gamma x, where x could be gamma, z, or Higgs, and of course any other Z2 even particle which is uh, present in the model. And uh, we assumed the Z2 symmetry to be the symmetry that uh, stabilizes the dark matter. And these particles can be automatically detected by the program. Then we have added a new gamma line spectrum analysis pipeline which is able uh, to do the full analysis of these new final states. In particular, it starts from the sigma v computation, which is a capability inherited from MedGraph. Then we can have the J factor computation for a variety of uh, region of interest and profiles. Then MedDM can 
of course the, the flux predictions and it can compare with the experimental uh, uh, constraints from Fermilot and Hess. And these features are available for any dark matter models which should be provided in the UFO NLO format. So um, we need to export the model by using these three mathematical packages, fine rules, fine arts, and NLOCP. An important step in uh, this analysis pipeline is the analysis of the gamma line spectrum. So we have one line for each uh, final state, and uh, these lines have, uh, are at a fixed energy. And of course, in an experimental setup, we need to take into account the energy resolution, which is going to smear each line into a Gaussian, basically. And then we can add three different cases. So take this animation in figure. This is related to a real case of a dark matter models in which we have studied the gamma gamma and the gamma z peaks. So when we increase the dark matter mass and so the center of mass energy, we can see that the peaks are going to be closer and closer to each other until we reach a point in which they can't be resolved by the experiment as two independent peaks. In this case, the two peaks may, uh, should be merged and their fluxes um, are combined together. A second case is uh, basically the opposite, when the peaks are, uh, are very well separated, so they can be considered as two independent peaks and they can be studied separately and analysis can be applied to each one of them in each one of them independently. The third case is uh, intermediate, so we, we have that the peaks are not very well separated. In this case, the application of the analysis is questionable as the experiments have worked in the hypothesis of the existence of a single gamma peak. Okay, so now let's talk about the physics application. We have uh, applied the new machinery to two dark matter models in order to obtain constraints on their parameter space. The first model we have considered is a top Philip model in which we have a Majorana dark matter candidate which interacts through the standard model um, interacts with the standard model through a scalar mediator which has the same quantum numbers as the right top quark. So it is basically a stop quark in a supersymmetric fashion. We have uh, three, three new parameters, which are the two masses and the coupling. And we have worked in the hypothesis that the mass of the mediator is fixed by the mass of the dark matter plus the mass of the top quark. Moreover, we have considered the region above 80 GV in dark matter mass, where the relic density depends on uh, coannulations and annihilations. We have taken the computation which has been made in uh, this work where the authors have combined the relic density in this case. So these are the loop induced annihilation diagrams for this model. We have considered uh, the three final states uh, gamma gamma, gamma z and gamma x. However we have found out that the gamma x final state uh, is not relevant uh, the, the cross-section is uh, um, uh, lower with respect to gamma gamma and gamma z, so it would not be shown in the results. And here we have the parameter space. So the relic density curve is uh, the black line. Then we show the relevant constraints with, uh, uh, for the uh, gamma line constraints which are shown in solid lines for the ANAS profile and the different experiments. Then we have the shaded bands, which represent the uncertainty on the dark matter profile. So the lower bound is related to um, CUSPY profile, such as the Navarro Frank White, while the upper bound is related to a more core profile, for example, the isothermal. So the relevant constraints, I mean, we, we, man we managed to constrain the parameter space only in this uh, low mass region for a uh, Fermilat. And also for Fermilat, we can see the three different cases of uh, relative positions of the peak. In this low mass region, the two peaks are very well separated. 
So we have basically taken the strongest between gamma gamma and gamma z constraint. We also show the projections for the CTA experiment. Then we have studied the inert doublet model. So this model is built on top of the standard model with the addition of a new doublet, the doublet phi, which is um, protected basically by a Z2 symmetry. So this new doublet um, adds four physical scalar states, which are H plus minus, A naught, and H naught, which we have uh, chosen to be our dark matter candidate. We have uh, five free new parameters, and I just, I just want to point out the parameter lambda L, which is a combination of the various lambda, uh, which is the parameter uh, responsible for this kind of vertex, so between dark matter and Higgs. So it is responsible for the Higgs exchange diagrams, which are uh, relevant for uh, relic density, dark detection, and also indirect detection. So the phenomenology of the model has been studied in uh, this work where the authors have computed and made a scan on the parameter space by considering the different constraints which are present on this model. They have also found a region around 72 GB in dark matter mass in which the uh, relic density is, uh, is reproduced correctly. And uh, it is also an interesting region be because it is unchallenged by direct detection and collider constraints. So we have considered these regions and we have applied the um, constraints coming from uh, gamma line searches. These are the loop induced annihilation diagrams. Uh, I mean, these are the main, an example of the main loop induced annihilation diagrams. Indeed, we have uh, uh, far a lot more diagrams with respect to the other case. And uh, we have considered uh, the gamma gamma and gamma z final states, as in this case, the gamma Higgs uh, cross section resulted to be suppressed. And uh, here we have the parameter space. So we have left panel gamma gamma, right panel gamma z. At this mass scale, the two peaks are uh, uh, very well separated from each other. We have the uh, parameter space scan points uh, which are shown for the one sigma and two sigma regions in uh, dark blue and blue then we have added the constraints uh, as uh, as before so a uh, solid line for uh, inast and the shaded band with re which represents the uncertainty on the dark matter profile in this case we can see only fermilot as has is out of range and then we show also the projections from uh, uh, the future gamma 400 experiment and the combination of the gamma 400 and fermilot for uh, the Inasta profile. We see that for gamma gamma, we managed to constrain the parameter space for uh, a CASPI profile, such as uh, an NFW, but also in the future, we will reach enough sensitivity to constrain it also for uh, the Inasta profile. The case is a little bit different for a gamma z final state. Indeed, even in the future, we will not have enough sensitivity to concern the parameter space. However, it would be um, an interesting observation to observe a line around 43 GB, uh, which uh, would basically represent a gamma z peak for this model. And this will be very important to establish uh, the inner doublet model. So we come to the conclusion, we have seen the new update of MEBM which implements the uh, automatic uh, generation and computation of the loop induced annihilation processes for generic dark matter models and allows to and contains a new analysis pipeline for uh, the gamma line spectrum and the flux prediction and comparison with uh, uh, the current uh, experimental searches. We have seen that these experimental searches uh, both uh, current, present, and also future are very promising to uh, constrain dark matter models, and uh, this is only the first step towards the implementation of uh, loop induced processes also for leak density and direct detection. Thank you.